Jeremy the Critic over here at iOS etc.com. I'm going to just go ahead and quickly get into the 12 tips and tricks for saving battery life in iOS 7, and I will talk to you guys on the back side of the video. Enjoy. One of the first things you're going to want to look at is the auto lock feature on your phone. And in order to do that, you're going to go to settings, general, and then scroll down to auto lock and select which one of the one through five minutes that you want to do or never. I always set mine to one just because it saves battery life. So that's one of the easiest quick fixes you can do if you have anything over a minute. Your iPhone comes equipped with an ambient light sensor. Essentially what it'll do is it'll adjust the brightness of your phone depending on what other light you have around it. But in order to enable this function, you're going to want to go to settings, wallpaper and brightness, and you'll see auto brightness. You want to go and turn that so the slides till it's green and then make sure to adjust the brightness of your screen and that way you can use more or less battery dependent upon how much sliding you do. You go slide to the left, it'll be less battery you used. You slide to the right to make it more bright, the more battery you're going to use. But that auto brightness feature is going to help you combat some excess battery usage. A great feature added in iOS 7 was called Control Center. And how you activate this is by swiping up on the bottom of your screen and this allows you to adjust the brightness much quicker than it is to go into your settings. So when you swipe up from the bottom you'll see the sliding bar there for the brightness. Go ahead and adjust it that way and then if you ever need to adjust it again just always swipe up from the bottom of your screen. Much quicker and much easier for you to access numerous functions on your iPhone not just for the brightness. If you're not using your Bluetooth function on your phone, it might be a good idea to turn it off. And one of the easiest ways to go ahead and turn off Bluetooth is by swiping up from the bottom of your phone. This will open up Control Center. From there, you see in the middle of the Bluetooth feature, go ahead and select that. It turns it off. So next time you want to turn it back on, swipe from the bottom of your screen and it'll open up Control Center again. And then you can turn back on Bluetooth fairly quickly and easily. The second way you can turn it off is go into Settings and then find Bluetooth and just slide the button to off and it will turn off the Bluetooth function of your phone and it will save you some battery life. This way is a little bit less efficient than opening up Control Center, but it accomplishes the same task. Not being on Wi-Fi does come at a cost. It's going to cost you some of your battery life if you are using the 3G and 4G LTE networks. So if you are in a crunch and you need to conserve some battery life, you might want to explore this option of turning your cellular data networks off. Go into settings and then cellular and to turn it off you'll just select cellular data and it will turn off all cellular data to restrict anything that you're doing to Wi-Fi. So your email, web browsing, app stuff, Facebook, all that stuff, you'll have to be on Wi-Fi in order to get that information. So now I know I just talked about turning off the cellular data portion of your phone in order to conserve battery life, but if you still have that portion of your phone on and you still want to save battery life, a good idea is to go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi searching that your phone's going to automatically be doing to try and connect to Wi-Fi networks. And here's how you're going to want to do it. Swipe up from the bottom of the screen and you'll unlock Command Center again. And you'll notice there you have the airplane mode and then Wi-Fi. You'll select that to turn off the Wi-Fi portion. I'm not going to do it right now because if I do that I will lose the connection that is recording all of the screenshots from my iPhone. Now the second way of turning it off but less efficient is going into uh, uh, settings and then selecting Wi-Fi and then you will see your Wi-Fi on off switch that you probably already have on as green and you'll go ahead and just select that and it will go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi. So now you're only accessing information as long as you have your cellular data network turned on. A new feature added in iOS 7 was called background motion. What it is is you'll have your background wallpaper and it sits behind your icons or your folders and when you move the phone around you'll see the background image move but you won't see the file folders or icons move. Once you've downloaded iOS 7, this function was already turned on. In order to turn it off and to save battery life, what you're going to want to do is go into Settings, General, Accessibility, select Reduce Motion, and move that button or slider to green. So you're turning the Reduce Motion function of your phone on so it will disable the uh, background motions option on your phone. It will save you some battery life, and some people actually got a little motion sickness from it, uh, believe it or not, so it's a good thing to go ahead and turn off to save your stomach and your battery life. Another battery draining function that was put into iOS 7 was called Dynamic Backgrounds. Now, unlike the background motions that was automatically enabled on your device, the Dynamic Backgrounds, you would have had to have selected one of their backgrounds or wallpapers for this to 
actually be turned on. So let's discuss how you can turn that off so you can save some battery life. Go to Settings, Wallpapers, and Brightness. You'll select Choose Wallpaper. It'll take you to the screen where you can select that. Top left is the Dynamic Backgrounds. Go and select one so you can kind of see what it looks like if you don't already have it enabled. Here's the blue screen. You can see that the bubbles start popping up on the screen. You can set that as a home or lock screen. If you have it turned on, you want to go ahead and turn it off to save battery life. Go ahead and select one of the stills or even one from your own camera. Here's one of the stills that I've selected that I'll go ahead and set as my lock screen or you could set as your home screen. When you go back to your home screen, if you had this enabled and you've changed, you'll notice that the new background no longer moves and is no longer dynamic, but it will save you battery life. A great function we have on our smartphones nowadays is location services. So if you're trying to find a restaurant in your general location, you're now able to do that if you have this enabled for whatever application you're using. However, it, there is a bit of a sacrifice for it. It does use battery life because some of the applications that you have on in the background are still using those location services. So if you want to turn that off, what you're going to need to do is open settings, scroll down until you see privacy, and you'll want to select that and that will open up the location services there on the top. You'll see is turned on, you'll select that. Now if you deselect the location services portion, you'll see that if you do turn it off, it disables all the apps that have any location services enabled. So it depends on if you want to do that. If you want to disable all of the location services, you can turn that off. However, you can just scroll through and kind of take a look at some of the things that you may not be using as much as you thought you would when you first download that application, you go ahead and turn those off that will kind of save some battery life because when you do open those applications it will enable location services and start chewing away at that battery life. Another function you might want to turn off to save some battery life is background app refreshing. What it does is let's say you are in an application and you're checking everything out and then you're kind of done with it for the time being and then you exit out of it. When it's running in the background it can kind of refresh content and check periodically to see if there's anything new and it will update the app so that way when you open it back up, that new content is there ready for you to view. However, if you've learned anything throughout this video, everything comes at a sacrifice. It will use battery life. So if you do want to turn this off, you're going to want to go to Settings, General, scroll down to the Background App Refresh, and it'll open up and you'll see there you can disable it for every application, or again, you can scroll through and see which ones you want to disable the Background App Refresh for. Again, it just kind of depends on what applications you use the most, and if it's something you're not using, and it may just be running in the background every now and then, you might want to turn it off to uh, conserve that battery life of yours. Another great feature that has been added to our iPhones as they've updated software is automatic updates. So if you download a new song or a new application, it will automatically load on other devices. However, it will chew away at battery life because it's constantly searching for new stuff. So if you do want to turn this off, you're going to want to go to Settings, Scroll down to the iTunes and App Store, you'll select that, and then you can see automatic downloads. You can select whether or not you want it to automatically download music, apps, books, and so forth. You can also select whether or not you want it to use cellular data to download these automatic updates as well. So not only can you save battery life, but you might be able to save some of that cellular data of yours too. Two other things you might want to look at to conserve battery life is the push data and fetch data options. The push data, it will automatically push data from the server to your phone, for example, your emails and such. If you wanted to turn that off when you go into your email account, you will then select to refresh it on your own. The fetch data option is used when the push data is off or applications that do not support the push function. It will then automatically go out every so often to check it. You can set up 15, 30, hourly, or manually. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to set those up or deselect those if you so choose. Go to Settings, and you'll want to scroll down to the Mail Contacts and Calendars. Select that. It'll open that up, and you'll see Fetch New Data there. You'll go ahead and select Fetch New Data. And then when you open it up, you'll see the push notification. If you turn that off, you'll have to then manually refresh on your own. And then when you scroll down underneath that, you'll see the Fetch Data option. You can do it 15, 30, hourly, manually. So you will have to be the one to go in. And if you turn both of these off, and you'll have to be done the one that will select and refresh all your data but you will save battery life. Your iPhone does have an equalizer on it. Whether or not you have adjusted it to optimize your music is kind of whether or not you've found it before, but in order to edit it, what you're gonna to wanna to do to, is go into settings, and then you'll scroll down to music and select that. And from there, you'll be able to see the equalizer, whether you have it adjusted at all. You can see mine is on the bass booster. Most people probably have not messed with this before, but if you do uh, listen to quite a bit of music, you probably have found this on your iPhone before. 
So in order to kind of save battery life, what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and turn that off because it's in real time. So it's not that your music itself is downloaded and, and set up for the bass boosting or the treble lesson or, or so on and so forth. It's something you have to select and it does it in real time. So that's how it uses more battery power. The last tip to kind of give you guys is exercise a little bit of common sense. Obviously, we all know that Netflix and YouTube and anything that is going to stream anything to your device that you're going to use, whether it's on cellular, cellular data or Wi-Fi, it is going to drain more battery. So just you exercise a little bit of common sense and your battery life can go a long way, especially if you're on a trip and you're trying to conserve the battery. You want to try and make it last as long as you can. So there you are, fellow iOS 7 users. There's 12 tips and tricks on saving your battery life in iOS 7. If you learned something from it, make sure and give me a thumbs up or make sure and follow me on Twitter at iOS App Critic. Check me out on Facebook where iOS Etc. has a new uh, Facebook page. I'm also on Pinterest, pretty much all over the place. So make sure and click the links and you can find me. So until next time, keep downloading those apps and I'll keep reviewing them and giving you information about them.